Hi everyone. Uh, the reason I'm offering this question right here is not because it's a hard question, because it, it isn't, okay? But it can be done in, in several different ways, three ways in particular that are, are worth mentioning. And so I wanna kinda do justice to all of those and make sure you've, you've got a resource here. So using the remainder theorem, find the value of k in the polynomial, okay, when the polynomial is divided by x minus three, and the remainder is one. Okay, now using the remainder theorem, okay, and what that means here is when I divide when I, when I, sorry, when I'm dividing by this thing right here, I'm getting a one here. Well, what that means is if I substitute in the value uh, for the variable that makes the divisor zero, the whole thing should collapse to one. So in this case here, if I, if I use three, if I let x equal three, that makes this divisor here equal to zero. So that's the number I'm gonna plug into here. So we're gonna plug in three cubed, okay, plus five times three squared, plus k times three, there's my unknown, minus eight, I know that that should be equivalent to one. Okay, that's what the remainder theorem says. Now, three cubed is 27, uh, three squared is nine times five is 45, so 27 plus 45 minus eight. Uh, do the math in my head, that's a lie. I have it written down on a piece of paper next to me. 64 plus three K is equal to one. Bring the 64 over, three K is equal to negative 63 k is equal to negative 21. Now that's using the remainder theorem. Now the truth is, and I know this to be true, that no matter what we say about using the remainder theorem, there will be a bunch of you that will simply do this by using synthetic division. So let's do synthetic division, okay? Let's make sure that that's at least happening correctly here. Now, remember there are at least two different ways to do this, um, but I'm going to just opt for one here. I've got x minus three here, uh, to be consistent, I'm going to put a positive three outside. I'm gonna, again, choose the number that makes the divisor equal to zero. So I'm gonna put a three out here. Now, all that means is that when I work the synthetic division down, I am going to be doing addition, okay? If you put a negative three out front, you're gonna be doing subtraction. It doesn't really matter. So here are my coefficients. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring down the one, multiply, add multiply, add. Now here's where it gets a little weird. Okay, or a little different here. This is gonna become k plus 24. Multiply, okay, 3k plus 72, add. And this is gonna get me 3k plus 64, but I know that the remainder is equivalent to one. So this is gonna be 3k plus 64 is equal to one. Ah, okay, 3k equals negative 63 k is equal to negative 21. And there's that negative 21 that I was looking at before. Now, there is another way of doing this. Okay, I wanna talk about how you might go about doing this on the calculator. Uh, Cause there's a little tool here and I think this is a, a really nice tool to know how to use here. It's in your math menu, okay? And we're gonna go down to the solver. So when you go onto the solver here, it, it opens this up here, it's setting it equal to zero. Okay, well, I've got x cubed, I'm gonna write it, I type in the expression, plus five x squared, okay? Uh, plus, now this is where it gets fun here, I'm actually gonna put in the k. Okay, so I'm gonna put kx minus eight. Now remember, this is set equal to one. Now, normally this would be set equal to the remainder but I'm setting this equal to zero. Okay, the, this, the way this works here, it's gotta be set equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract one from it. Okay, I'm gonna bring that over so the expression's equal to one, and I'm gonna press enter. Now what this does is it now lists all the variables here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is when I'm, when I, to use the remainder theorem here, when I divide by x minus three, that is the same as assigning the value of three to x. Just think about it, That's you're doing the substitution. So I plug in the three, and then I come down to k, and this is the one that I want it to solve for. So this is where I go and I use that solve right there. So I have to use alpha, enter, and when I come back up, surprise, surprise, it tells me that the answer is negative 21. Now remember, this is a really nice tool to use anytime you're using an equation that has a whole bunch of variables in it. Uh, once you've entered it in, and remember it's gotta be set equal to zero, it will list off the variables. You simply identify what each one is that you know, and then move the cursor to the one you don't know, press second solve, and it'll tell you what that is. Really, really nice little tool.